Today's video is on the Dwarf Gourami. I've been getting tons of requests to do this one. I think it's because the Dwarf Gourami is so popular. It is probably hands down the most popular uh, Gourami species that they sell. And it's like a huge mainstream. I don't want to call it a beginner fish, but I think a lot of beginners, um, I feel like the Dwarf Gourami really brings in a lot of newbie fish keepers because it, it's a tiny fish that you don't need a huge tank for. So a lot of pet store employees say, well, hey, um, you're getting a little eight gallon tank. Uh, dwarf Gourami would be perfect for it. And it's super colorful. And I think that's why it's so popular. So um, there is that that goes that goes being said with a double edged sword, though, because these fish are prone to sickness. And I'm going to talk about that. But they can also be aggressive. So it's kind of um, it's a scary deal with the Dwarf Gourami. Um, I'm doing a tank change on this tank right here. I can't forget about it. Uh, this tank looks really cool right now. I'm kind of happy with it, even though it's all fake plants. These are angels, fire mill cichlids, and a bunch of uh, other South American cool fish. So, um, I just, I can't get over it. It looks absolutely stunning. And I have a new purple rose queen cichlid in there. Um, but today's video isn't on cichlids and I don't want you guys to think that I only am into cichlids even though that's what like 80% of my fish room is. Um, Gouramis are awesome fish. <sighs> I got some super cool footage today a bunch of people sent me so I want to give a huge shout out to you guys in the Facebook groups because I can't do videos without cool footage. So let's um, take a look at some of these beautiful dwarf Gouramis and I'll just sit there and talk about how to take care of them. And if you have any further questions, make sure to hit up the comment section. Um, I have, I'm super busy lately with switching over my fish room out to the, to the new building. Yeah, look at that green Texas. He's just super ecstatic. If you guys haven't tried keeping cichlids, I highly advise it because they are some of the most personable fish on the planet and they're super, super sturdy. I know today's video is on the dwarf Garami, but cichlids, guys, I heart cichlids. I heart them. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Let's do this. All right, so let's talk about taking care of the dwarf Garami. And I want to keep this a lot simpler than a lot of the other guides on YouTube, just because I feel like a lot of beginners are keeping dwarf Garamis and a lot of that pH talk and hardness is really over our head essentially. So I'm just gonna keep this super simple and as easy as possible. All right, first of all, there are there are numerous types of dwarf Garamis. There's the neon blue, the powder blue, the flame, the honey, and uh, they're all super colorful and the males are gonna hold most of the coloration. I find that most people buying dwarf Garamis are looking to pit them in a 10 gallon tank and I think that's why they are so popular because a lot of newbies are buying smaller tanks and employees are telling them that dwarf Garamis can live in these smaller tanks. And I think that in turn is also a double edged sword because I, I'm seeing an overwhelming overwhelmingly number or high number of people having problems with Garamis in general. And I think it's because it's such a small tank and the water parameters go south much faster than a larger tank. So to tell you that uh, a, a good tank size for a dwarf Garami is a 10 gallon tank, I'm gonna totally disagree with that because the larger the tank, the easier the water parameters are to keep on check. And by the way, I want to apologize for some of this footage being a little dark, but um, I, I want to give a huge shout out to the people letting me use this footage because I had absolutely no dwarf Garamis in the fish room right now, but I was just, I needed to make a video. So um, as far as feeding these guys, um, they're super opportunistic feeders, they're omnivores. You'll find that they'll eat probably anything you throw in the tank, but you got to be careful not to overfeed them because they also do suffer from bloat. And I think that's because the fish has a tendency to just eat and eat and eat. And that's somewhat of a bad thing with some fish because they get bloat and then they get stressed and just die pretty easily. The most ideal setup, in my personal opinion, is probably going to be like a 30 gallon long with a lot of heavy vegetation. I'd like to see you use live plants, but if you need to use uh, fake plants, that's totally fine. 
Um, I use a lot of fake plants myself just because I have uh, some salinity salt in my water and the plants just don't do all that great. So the most ideal setup is a longer tank, a little bigger in size. Some of you are gonna hate hearing that, but it's just, you know, a 20, 30 gallon tank is a lot easier to take care of than a 10 or a five gallon tank, just because you can do, the water changes are less detrimental, less detrimental, sorry, I cannot speak today, <laughs> to, to, the, to the water parameters of the entire tank. Like when you do 50% water change of a 30 gallon tank, it's, it's less diluted in comparison to a 10 gallon tank. So um, as far as tank mates, uh, well, let's just walk this through. So you're gonna get a 20 gallon aquarium. I advise getting a long version uh, or a 30 gallon long. It gives the fish more room to move around. Get some heavy vegetation as far as plants just because uh, they can get somewhat aggressive and they'll chase each other and chase other fish. I've seen dwarf gouramis be highly aggressive towards other fish and a lot of times they will be super aggressive to other gouramis. So just watch that and maybe be ready to return a fish back to the store if need be. Uh, so many people are afraid to do that, but it's actually not a huge deal. Fish stores are used to it. They'd rather have you do that than have your fish die essentially. So um, get some heavy plants for coverage, get some decent food. Uh, I highly advise New Life Spectrum. They're a great food. I'll throw a link in the description box. Get yourself a water changer. That's the thing that hooks up to the faucet and you can hit a switch and it'll pull water out and then you hit the switch again and it'll push water back in. It's much easier than using buckets. Um, I would advise on a 20 gallon tank, maybe do a 50% water change once a week. And if you have live plants, that's really gonna help with water changes. So maybe if you're deciding if you wanna do, you know, like getting live plants really helps in take down the number of water changes because obviously plants eat the nutrients that the fish gives off, the nitrates. So what else is there? Oh, a filter. I would advise just getting a AquaClear 110. Don't, don't get a super powerful filter just because gouramis have that labyrinth style breathing and they will commonly be seen coming to the surface gulping for some air. So having too much surface movement can sometimes be a bad thing with gouramis. I also find that a lot of problems that happen with gouramis are having to deal with the heaters and the water temperature of the person's tank. And it's weird because I look up guides on dwarf gouramis and people say, yeah, they're, they're really susceptible to a wide range of water temperatures. But I totally disagree with this. I don't know if it's like the farm raised fish that is more susceptible to water changes, but I highly advise you get a decent quality heater because this, this is, in my opinion, the number one reason why gouramis die because the water temp drops below 76 degrees and then the sick the fish gets kind of stressed out and gets sick and it just snowballs from there so i highly advise getting a high quality heater and maybe uh, a bigger heater or else two heaters running together that way if one fails the other makes up for it and i i commonly see that people that use that one tetra heater that's an automatic set heater that you just put in there that thing is totally faulty it never works i highly advise not buying that so i'll throw a link in the description box to an eheim jagger it's probably the best heater on the market right now these fish are pretty easy to take care of guys like i said get a tank with enough coverage tank mates get some tetras other garamis uh nice uh, tropical community fish that can cohabitat with other fish nicely, air quotes, AKA. And uh, you should have yourself a good tank. Dwarf gouramis are super popular. All right, guys, make sure to subscribe, like this video, and comment if you have more questions.